Okay, I want to examine this phrase, Book of Life. And I see um, a number of people seem to be confused, unsure about what this particular phrase means. So let's sort of um, examine this just a little bit here, and maybe I can help uh, bring some clarity to what this particular phrase means. All right, the very first mention in Philippians 4, 3, and I treat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. All right, and so that's the first mention, and then we have seven mentions in the book of Revelation. Okay, and eight mentions in all. So um, I think that some of the issues are with what's written in the book of Revelation. So the first mention in the book of Revelation is uh, Revelation 3, verse 5. Let me make this larger, easier to see. And it says, He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Now, he that overcometh is he that is born of the Spirit of God. All right, and he shall be clothed in white raiment. He that is born again or born um, of God, all right? So, and I will not blot out his name in the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father, and before his angels. Okay, and then there's uh, Revelation 22. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Okay, and... Whoso, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. So, um, as it pertains to, let's say, once saved, always saved, it should be pretty obvious. I, I would think that um, he that overcometh is born of the Spirit of God and shall never die. So, obviously, uh, you know, once you're saved... You are always saved, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, right? So, uh, it's hard to understand those who aren't saved and, and the confusion that they have, but I think it might stem from Revelation 20. God shall take away his part out of the book of life. So, let's take a look at... Oh, Right here, Revelation 20. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. Now this is Judgment Day. This is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven like we read in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. When it talks about you shall see the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And the angels will come and gather together the elect. And they will be lifted up to meet the Lord in the air. And then those below who are unsaved will be judged and they will be destroyed forever so this is the same event the same time um, that's happening and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were open and another book was open which is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works all right so think of it this way so each person your life uh, you start a book when you're born and that, that book ends when you're when you die all right so you've got your book of life the story that tells your life and then you've got the lamb's book of life which is everlasting life all right so if you look at uh, like revelation 20 verse 12 and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open that means their life story is opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life, the Lamb's book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in those books, in the books, according to their work. So essentially, very easily, to put it very simple, 
if you're in your life, you've never been born of the Spirit of God, you are not in the book of life. That means you don't have everlasting life. It's like what Jesus says in John 3. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit, right? He says, Marvel, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. All right, so that which is born of water, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, unto, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. All right, that means he must be born of God, must be born of the Spirit of God. And uh, let's see if I can find it. Another, let's see, what am I looking for here? Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh, the world. So we just read that, didn't we? And uh, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Okay, and let's see. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Right? And notice faith and not works, right? Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. All right. So if you look at uh, these books um, properly and, and in context, I think it makes it easier to understand what it means uh, in particular. Hold on one second. Okay. And it makes it easier to understand, uh, you know, like uh, Revelation twenty two nineteen, God shall take away his part of the book of life and uh, out of the holy city. Basically meaning uh, these people that change what the book of Revelation says, they're not saved and they will never be saved. Okay. Um, it's pretty simple stuff. And... You know, take this as a stern warning. Don't be messing around with the book of Revelation, right? I mean, it's pretty, pretty simple. In fact, uh, you know, just stick with the King James Bible because it is the perfect, pure word of God. And I hope that clears up a little bit. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else to add here. Let's see. And... Yeah, so I think that that pretty much. I mean, it's there's, it's not that complicated. It's not rocket science. You've got the Lamb's Book of Life, which is everlasting life, and you believe in Jesus. You're born of the Spirit. You will live forever.